Last time on Colony Confidential. I would tell you, you got to check your pipes. You got a radiator. You got a phone line that comes in. And it starts out as a small hole, but they can shoot through it. If I was to go to your house, I would tell you, again, clean up everything. And, and what I mean, everything in the kitchen, all the sweet and low sugar, it's got to be put in a container. Uh, clean everything down. And before you go to bed, make sure you wash your hands thoroughly so there's no food on them and wipe your mouth. The chances of them biting you at night, if it's only one rat, it's possible, but unlikely. They're there for a reason. They're looking for food, water. They're not going to get any water from you and they're going to get any shelter from your body. Doors don't mean anything. Windows don't mean anything. But it's the plumbing and electrical wires and phone wires. You got to look at that. Go to the hardware store and get copper mesh. It's from Miss America, all the ships at sea. Ed Sheehan for Colony Confidential. Welcome to another episode. Yeah, Joey Buns the brains. Welcome. So, how are you? I've had a very fulfilling day. Did you? Mm hmm. That's amazing. A lot going on with the podcast. Like what? It's a lot of good episodes. Cool. The two-step review one is getting a lot of uh, feedback on that. We are actually in the process of mandating that the entire company listens to both. Oh, good. A heavy push on reviews for the company. Leading by example is always a big thing. And part of why I didn't get reviews is because I wanted the team to do it and I didn't want to take reviews away from them. So being that the best a uh, team member has 13 reviews over the course of a year, which is not where we wanted it to be. I went nuts asking for reviews. My plan is to get a hundred just to show them that it's possible. If you can get a hundred reviews in a month, which is probably asking for two to 250, the, the bonus is a thousand dollars in your next check. To me, this is just my opinion. All the reviews that I had, the 10 best ones, were mostly hospitals, nursing homes, Shea Stadium, stuff like that. And people would ask me, what does this got to do with a house? I said, if I can get this kind of review in a hospital, nursing home, your house is, don't worry about it. Here's the beauty. Now that I'm asking certain people for reviews, it's almost created a competition. I've had four people today text me saying something along the lines of, if you ever got a better review than this, let me know. Which is great. Customers competing to give you a great review. So I'm liking it. I'm liking it. So here's a guy, director of environmental services. And he wrote, colony from the president of the company all the way down to the technicians are always available and understand the facility's expectations and accountability. Their responsiveness and constant communication is second to none in the pest control industry. Highly recommend. Perfect. So where did you learn about calling as the head guy? Ah, one of these classes I took. I think you learned it when we were going up to Cape Cod and I stopped at two hotels to check in. Oh, I didn't do shit. Yes, most of this stuff was beaten into my brain by you. Yes. You seem to have stuck. Yeah, it's stuck. There's certain things that you did to us that we didn't realize were for us that, of course, are ingrained in us that most people... Don't necessarily think of, I had this conversation today with Jamie about things in our head that we don't even think about. I was talking to her about the nonprofit and the financial education piece. I said, think about where we grew up and our friends and the people that we were around and how many of them knew how to balance a checkbook before we had a checking account or whatever. A lot of people don't know yeah. that we knew which is part of educating us, right? Everybody makes their kids better. The piece that, that you're talking about checking in on people, as a business owner, you try and do it as much as you can. And that obviously was given to us by you. And of course, the more you grow, the less you're able to personally do it. But you instill it in your team and it's all part of the customer service experience and the service level that we provide. But yeah, customer service seemed to be natural for us but it's really just because of what we learned growing up and being the offspring of an entrepreneur. I learned that if I did a good job and 
doing a good job was not only solving the problem, but also talking to the people, explaining stuff, this what they could expect and stuff. And what I learned, they would recommend their neighbors, they would recommend their cousins. And then it turned out, I did a good job in a hospital. All of a sudden, I got recommended to bigger and better hospitals, each one more and more. That goes a long way. And then when we got into the bigger accounts, they wanted references. I call these accounts to ask for references. They gave them to me. I just said, you can call this person. You remember, what's his name? We knew him from the surf club. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, when I gave him those, he goes, you're the first exterminator that gave me references. Everybody says you're great. I went over all of them. Nobody says you're good. I go, you're not good. He goes, well, say you're great. Can you start? You know, it just, it just snowballs. But now it's all different ballgame because now you have the internet and you got to put this stuff on the internet. So yeah, you're doing the right thing. That still happens in a commercial account. When you put your proposal forward, they ask for three to five references, depending on who. We just got those three hospitals in Brooklyn, Manhattan, and Queens in October, and they wanted five references of a similar size. And they wanted the location, the contact, their phone number, and their email. So that still happens. But Mm -hmm. before you even get to that point where you and me are at an event together and we're colleagues and I say, yo, you should call Colony Pest. Even before you call me for that commercial account, you may go and look at my reviews on Google. Yeah, of course. As time passes and we get older, that's going to ring true even more. There's still going to be that colleague that refers you, but if you go and you have a rating below a four, they might think their colleague's crazy. And that's why you have to focus on the reviews online, really both. That's a good thing. But what I like the best is you can go back in there and if you get a bad review, it's going to be documented what they said and what you made an attempt there. Well, I'm the owner. I'll solve the problem. I'm sorry. Tell me what was the problem. Correct. Or if they said the problem, say, I will fix this problem. for you. Absolutely. If you allow me to come back for no charge, I will fix this problem. But then there's the flip side that we started focusing on maybe six, seven years ago which is the employee experience and employee engagement, even making them happy. Much better at that than I was. <laughs> also, I got them to work. I learned from you to adapt and change with the times also. And if you don't adapt and change, you die. So yeah. that was huge. Change. So now you have employee engagement and not everybody even understands what that's about. On top of all of that, throw in this whole virtual everything. If you still have people that are working virtually from home, how are you engaging your team members? Here's another thing. We are doing our best to remove the word employee from our vocabulary. Okay. I learned my friend, Richard Jabara. I saw he changed his company years ago, 25, maybe 30 years ago. Everybody was an associate and there was a book on associates and stuff like that. Yeah. So get team members. Right. And it's, if you really think about it, it's true. Even though you may say it differently, but in anything, you're only as good as the weakest link. Your weakest link does affect the rest of the team. And I'm not saying you don't let people go, but you have to assess it. What's the issue with the weakest link? And you work to correct it and bring them up to speed. So everybody is at the same level. You have to re-educate them. You need to find out what it is. Maybe they're having a bad day. Maybe they're having personal issues. Things that many years ago we never thought of. And even to this day, it pains many people to have to think about it. And that's where we are. Words are powerful. 15 years ago, when we were setting up formal QA documents, what was the word that we used? Deficiencies. Yeah, okay. And that was the hot word. That was the right word to use. And now that word needs to be removed because of its negative connotation. And you just say areas of improvement. So the good part about employee relations, what is it, HR? Uh Uh-huh. Human resources. Instead of doing it my way, which staying on them, being a little rough now and again, threatening them, you bring them in as I value them. If I didn't value you, you didn't stay. But it's done in a much better way where you have these reports. When I was working somewhere else, helping out uh, homeless people, 
Everybody gets a report but me. The answer was, everybody loves you. And I was so annoyed. I want you to tell me that I can't be perfect. They never gave it to me. But anyway, if you do that and they get a good report, that's great. If they don't get a good report and they want to know why, how can I improve this if they're really into it, it shows that, you know what? He's not doing so good, but he's inquiring what can he do to make himself better. I got to help this guy out. What a lot of us need help with, business owners, not just pest control, the home service industry, anybody that owns a company is team member engagement and tips for it. Especially now, remember we spoke about all these large corporations, even small companies, everybody's at home working from home. So just as an example, we're like, oh my goodness, we have to stay home. Do you just send somebody home with a laptop and say, wake up at nine o'clock and work to five? Or do you want to create certain things you want to mimic or duplicate what you've done in your own office, like creating a healthy workspace? You want to recreate it in the person's home. So if you we have a healthy workspace, even when it's virtual, people are going to work better. You want to talk to your team about maintaining a routine, even though they're at home, so that it's still like they're at work. You want to okay. create continued social interaction with the team. And it's our job as managers and owners and whatnot to build that into their day. You can't just hope. You can't just say, hey, guys, make sure you're social. Good luck. It almost gets to the point where you need to schedule 30 minutes a day for a conversation or, hey, team, we're going to do this quick FaceTime interaction, Zoom interaction or MS Teams interaction. We're going to do a puzzle together, whatever it is. And they feel still like a family or like a team where they're still working together. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. The healthy workspace that I was talking about, I'm not just talking about creating a pantry in the office that has good snacks and stuff like that. There has to be a certain amount of enjoyment or fun, yeah, especially yeah. on a Monday when everybody talks about how they screwed up over the weekend and you laugh. I had a thing. Everybody could be made fun of, even me. Of course, I was going to come back at you, but it worked. We had some good laughs, but I could see it was bonding them. And the other thing that helped, they could come on Sundays and play golf. And I found out playing golf with them, I found out more they'd open up because I wasn't the boss. We were all playing golf. We've tried the golf thing and certain people did it. We've done other employee and team member engagement events that people love. The biggest one for us has always been bowling. Everybody has come to that and we look forward to be able to put that together again. But you have to remember all things virtual now. We are actually in the process of putting in a, a virtual event together for the team. So think about this whole virtual world. Even though we have people, like every Monday I come into my office and I say, how was your weekend? The answers are not good. You can tell that people are tired of, of being home. People are still not really willing to go out. One of our team members, I ask every Monday, and the response is always the same. Come on, man, you didn't do anything. COVID-19. But one of their relatives did a last minute birthday party at local event space. And uh, you could see her face light up when she was talking about it. I actually went out and she was excited. Whereas every other week for the past 20 weeks, whatever it's been, I didn't do nothing, man. It's Some people, not our guys, cause they gotta go out every day, j just weekends and nothing. But a friend of mine, she had a beautiful painting and she told her sister, I'll give it to you. She went to the sister, opened the door and said, just hand it to me. You can't come in. COVID's running rampant. Like, I hope you took the painting back. No, she grabbed it out of my hand. You know what? I think it's people that are old that are more frightened than people that are younger. You're young, you gotta go out, you gotta make a living. It sucks, but I know a place, if you want to go to get dinner or, or breakfast or lunch, that's open. It's near uh, where Bowers fell lives. People are going to think like they're a little bit more immune with the vaccine. You know what I would suggest to you, well, for the troops? I would look up a bunch of restaurants in Long Island and up in Westchester 
and yeah, you got to take a ride, but you're not doing anything anyway. Get out and go to one of these restaurants. That is a good idea. We'll look into that. You know what? I got to tell you something else. My opinion, people got more scared since you can get the vaccine, but you might not be able to get it because they're running out. Ah, they're running out. Oh, shit. I've been putting up with the shit for nine months and all of a sudden, ah! You know what that is. It, it, people just want to be upset. That's it. I'm upset. They COVID. It. I'm upset there's a vaccine. Now I'm upset I can't get the vaccine. Now yeah. there's five vaccines and I got to pick from one. Now I'm upset that I had to get two shots, but Johnson & Johnson is coming out with a one-shot vaccine. Like, just shut up already. Yeah, you know what? In, in my opinion, these people have a boring life. Oh, oh, by the way, you can't come in to the house, but it's okay to go visit the doctor, take a bus and go, because it's the doctor. It's the doctor. They're losing their friggin' minds and the common sense shit. You're going to die, you're going to die. Take all the precautions and have a good time. You can't have a good time, but you have the best time you can. But it is a pain in the ass. Like, I was never big on eating out. And I even told a friend of mine, this is bullshit. Three nights a week, I ain't going out to eat. We'll eat at home. I'm going to eat at home. But after not going out for a while, I said, let's go out. <laughs> let's find someplace. There's got to be somebody breaking the law. Like prohibition with the liquor. This is prohibition with the food. Yeah, and there may or may not be things like that going on. But let me reel it back in here. <laughs> Back to team member engagement, because the other piece I talked about a healthy workplace, but also encouraging wellness and well-being practices. If you remember about two years ago, before the insurance said that they would pay a piece of it, we were paying for gym memberships up to a certain dollar amount. We were paying to help people to quit smoking people to lose weight if you wanted to lose weight. We're just trying to encourage all these well-being and health practices because you want your whole team to be healthy for numerous reasons. One, so that they do, they work well. Two, so that they're healthy and that they can retire and spend the 401k that you've contributed to as the owner. But you want to encourage healthy practices and well-being. Can I sum this up? I doubt it's it. It's a way of telling the employees you give a shit about them, not just the way they work. Yeah. And there'll be a lot more. There'll be a lot of different conversations when you're working out. Who knows what it'll be about? What's going Whatever. I did it like three years ago with the kid, Danny. Remember the kid, Danny from yeah, Staten? the prison guard. Yeah. The prison guard. All right. I did it with him. We went three days a week and I learned so much about him. I even learned that job was coming up for him. And it was awesome because it wasn't like when he told me. There was no, I can't believe you're going to leave us. How could you begrudge the kid to go and do that job and, and live with his family upstate? His yeah. dad, his brother, his sister. No, that's that, a good point. He could have made similar money with us, but it, it wasn't a state job and his family was still an hour and a half away. But from going to the gym, it created a better experience because when it slipped, he knew it slipped. I was like, yo, that's great. Just do me a favor. When you start to do it, just tell us if it's a month in advance, whatever, you're a great employee. We'd like the opportunity to potentially offer you something and compete. But at the end, so, we could not compete with the family piece and him living. Right. So your, your gym was like my Sunday golf. Sure. But you have to do it all, right? Because everyone doesn't like golf. Everyone doesn't like the gym. Everyone doesn't like bowling. Everyone doesn't like the bar. You need to do multiple team member engagement initiatives. As the owner, you have to make your management do it. Like one of the things that's in the budget this year for 2021 is team member engagement initiatives. So the service manager has X amount for his team members and X amount for client interaction. Director of operations, Chris, same thing. Customer service manager, same thing. And then you have my budget. Most of the big events fall under my budget. Right. Has always been in there where we do the events for the customers and we throw in a marketing piece to tell them what's new and what we're doing or we make them like the price of admission, if you will, is bring somebody we never met before. That's completely separate. This is just team member engagement. If you remember 
two years ago, I think, when Chris, after the company dinner, Chris offered everybody that was at the company dinner to I go remember. to Macanudo Club. And everybody didn't smoke cigars, so only eight people went. But still. That was eight people. So what I'm thinking, we should have a form that we'd like to know you know, what you do in your hobbies and leisure time activity, because we're working on something here where maybe we could set up some things. So yes, and, and that's been done for probably the past three or four years, requesting ideas for team events. So the okay. biggest one that HR frowns upon has been paintball. <laughs> I'd like that. Yeah. You're going to give me all the knee pads and all the stuff that the guys on the Big Bang Theory have? I don't know. That's one that always comes up that HR was like, that's a little dangerous if somebody shoots somebody. And, and because there's a lot of inferences that go into it. One of the strategic initiatives put forward for this coming year by the service manager, Tom, was he wants to see about creating colony sports teams or some type of league whether it's bowling, darts, softball, he came up with a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Great idea. Remember when we you had know what? You know what? Football team? Bowling would be the best because in softball, you could get hurt sliding into the base. I'm going to let the team decide on what team events they would like to do. Okay. okay. If you pick softball, I could be the third base coach. Okay. You'll bring your bugle like you played the other day. Yeah. The point. Let me reel you back in again, please. This, okay. This is worse than uh, deep sea fishing over here. It's about team member engagement, right? And yeah. another piece to this whole virtual engagement with the team is investing in technology and communication tools. Mr. and Mrs. America, all the ships at sea. If you got questions or maybe answers, we'd like to hear from you. Why don't you send us an email at colonyconfidential.com. Even if you wanted to call us names, it's okay. You know we're going to get back at you. But anyway, it's more of an information network. You got a problem, customers, pricing, buying stuff, send us an email at colonyconfidential.com. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to subscribe and review. Send us anything you want us to know about at colonyconfidential at gmail.com.